Let's talk about my WWE tryout. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so my most recent WWE tryout, my second one, and undoubtedly my last one, was uh, February 2021. And uh, I got to fly down to Orlando and go to the backup performance center because they had everyone like a block or two away from the regular performance center uh, in this little building, just two rings in that one, not seven. And it was just two days and I'd heard that they invited 12 people down and eight showed up and it was the six wrestlers and two of the non-wrestlers. And uh, one guy got bounced immediately because apparently he'd been in Australia like 48 hours before. And that was a no-go because we were mid-pandemic. Uh, so it left the six wrestlers and one other guy. And uh, we went in there and it was just two days. And in that two days, it was drills and drills and drills and promos and a strength session with their really awesome strength and conditioning coach, Sean Hayes. And uh, they just ran us through the ringer. Like they just want to run you ragged. They want to run you dry. Like they just... They're trying to kill you. And I, I don't think they're really even testing your cardiovascular conditioning and they don't care about your strength. Uh, they care about your grit, like your determination and persistence. You know, they, they wanna see if you have the heart to make it and to not mentally break. And I, I know like down there in a situation like that, a billion dollar company, like I, they can't let me die. Um, and I know it can't be half as hard as what I had to live through in Japan and the dojo where they can hurt you. And I did see them hurt people. And uh, I performed every day doing all these tasks I didn't think were humanly possible uh, for fear of getting murdered in the ring. Um, so I, I, and I also knew at 15 years deep into my career that this is probably the last opportunity I would ever have to get the dream job. So every time that we got asked to do a drill, I tried to jump in the ring first. And on some of the drills, I would jump into the ring again at the end to do them twice. And at the end of all of it, the other six guys who were in there, I think almost all of them came up to me and said they thought that I killed it, that I probably did the best out of everyone. And then multiple of the coaches came up to me and told me the same thing, that they were really, um, proud of the effort that I put in and they thought that I showed up and uh, kind of dominated. And that's no disrespect to the other six guys. They, they were all amazing and they're all great individuals too. I actually think that they should have signed all seven of the people in that tryout. And I think if they'd signed any of us, that that would have been a smart decision. Uh, and I, I knew a lot of the drills that we we're gonna have to do going into it. And I've been training them for years. And they give you only like three weeks to prep for the tryout. So if you haven't been training nonstop anyway in your daily life, like you just won't, you won't make it anyway. They'll know you weren't prepared and you just have to always be ready. So I was ready. And every time I jumped in there, I just thought it's, it's cool if you die in the ring. Like give everything you got because otherwise you've fought 15 years for nothing. And I would regret having not given everything when I had the opportunity to give everything. And I wasn't gonna live life with that regret. So every time I was in there, I left my soul in that ring. And after two days, I left a real big chunk of me down at the back of PC in Orlando. And I still feel that void from what I left in there. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of what I did and I'm proud of what I gave and I would do it the same way again. But there's, there's that hole in there because I let everything out in those two days because this is my life. And uh, I'm not gonna say I earned that job, but I gave everything I got for it. And uh, at the time I'd been to 15 countries and I'd done it on my own without a lot of people vouching for me or trying to help me out. And um, man, I, I, just, I gave it what I had. And uh, anyway, 
at the end of those two days, I, I thought I had the job. I walked away thinking that I had the job. And I even remember driving my rental car back to the hotel and seeing that there was a public supermarket a mile and a half or two miles down the road. And I was like, I'm just gonna, just gonna walk. I'm just gonna walk. I'm gonna walk that distance that I walked every morning in Japan from my significant other's house back to the dojo along the Kanda River every morning. And I'm just gonna clear my head and um, think about my life up until that point. And I did. And man, that walk to and from Publix in the dead silence, like no headphones in. That was, that was powerful. And then three weeks later, I got the email. The email saying that uh, you didn't get the job. And in the blow-off email that they send you, the generic, we're really proud of your effort, but there's nothing for you at the moment. Email, they don't give you any reasons why they didn't hire you. So I reached out to my people down there and I asked what was up. And they told me I was too old. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I think I was about the same age as when they invited me down three weeks before. So I didn't get younger in three weeks. I got more conditioned and maybe more determined. Um, definitely didn't get younger though. I didn't think that would be the thing to bite me, but here we are today, uh, a few years later. And that is uh, the story of my uh, WWE tryout.